thing. So this is where we landed yesterday. We have a few different equations, very simple looking equations that represent the behavior of light waves, the energy, frequency, and the wavelength, and the relationships among them. The H and the C, you'll be given. You don't have to memorize those. When you take the AP exam, those numbers will be on the, uh, the sheet that gives you all the constants and formulas. And uh, the formulas, of course, will be given to. I will give you those in the quiz and the test. So uh, a lot of this is going to be review from what you read. I am going to go through this pretty quickly because I think a lot of it is just uh, restating what the book said. So assuming that you did read, um, it'll be fine. Now this is the Bohr equation. So Bohr's, um, his thought about electrons was very much a, called a solar system model because it was just like what we see the solar system as. We have a nucleus, which in the case of the solar system is the sun, and things go around it. Now, uh, there's Mercury, and then there's uh, Venus, and then there's Earth, and Mars. Hi! Yes, please come in. Okay, hi you guys. Uh, we probably recognize us for creation. Uh, for St. Patty's Day, we're walking around again for Troy People Concerned. This is a really awesome charity because everything you donate goes back to people in Troy who really need it. People need it most. It goes to nursing homes, people who care for groceries every week, that kind of thing. And if, uh, if you guys donate a dollar, you get this fancy little leprechaun to put your name on and it goes up in the showcase. If you donate five, you get a really clover. And anything more than five, you get a gold uh, really clover. So oh. <laughs> uh, if you guys would donate, we would really, really appreciate it. Again, this is an awesome cause. And I mean, look at what Athens just did. So I feel like that should be started. Did you hear what Athens did? Their oh. charity week? Did they raise like 100? Over $150,000. Yeah. $155,000, yeah. all right? Uh, so, yeah, if you have a dollar or a five or whatever, if you want to give it to Troy Pooh. Uh, uh, no, we're doing this until the 24th. So, yeah, anything is accepted and Big nine one this year. Hey, yo, what's good, video watchers? Oh, yeah, that's true. All right, thank you. No, no, we should tell him to watch it. Peter. Okay, so I was talking about how uh, what Bohr thought about the electrons is, is like our solar system model, where you have the sun as the nucleus, and then there's Mercury, which would be the closest planet to the sun. It goes around the sun. It never falls into the sun. It just keeps going around and around and around. Then there's Venus. Now, what's in between Mercury and, Mercury and Venus? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's in between Mercury and Venus? I'm so sorry that I asked this. No. <laughs> wait, wait, no, they're the first and second planets. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're the first. Wait, what is in between? Okay, I'll just tell you. 
There's Mercury and there's Venus, and what's in between them is a lot of nothing. It's just empty yeah, space yeah. between those two planets. Mars. <laughs> I thought that would be a here's his answer video watches. Yeah. So we we'll just have to go back I'm and edit this video. Here's his problem, you know. Well, I'm a space. I'm a space shuttle. Yeah. We can tell he has uh, not, not been out there much. <laughs> anyway, so that is the exact same thing that Bohr was suggesting. There's the first energy level, and then out from it is the second energy level. But the electron cannot be in between the first and the second. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't exist there. So uh, that uh, is, is this idea of quantized energy, that the electron can only have certain allowed energies. And if, it, if the energy is not allowed, the electron cannot have that energy. So it's, it's a, a strange thing because, uh, you know, uh, we think that, well, if we're going to go from Mercury to Venus, we need to get into some space shuttle or, or space travel vehicle and, and go there. And so we would have any space from, from the, any distance from the sun between Mercury and Venus because we had to go through that distance. But the electrons don't do that. For what, uh, however they do it, uh, they jump, but they're never in between. So that uh, the energy of the electron is calculated like this. And because this term is squared, that's why uh, the energy levels are not evenly spaced. Uh, it's a good day in chemistry, isn't it? You are Except you're uh, distracting my students, don't they? Now you're distracting the teacher. Uh, <laughs> Alibis. <laughs> I pass around my favorite thing. OK. So this is the Bohr equation. The variables are defined there. E represents the energy of the electron. The N is what energy level the electrons are in. And uh, the Z squared, or the Z, the book says it's the nuclear charge. I think of it as the atomic number. It's the same thing. Now that negative sign out in front of the E, well, in front of this expression, uh, that, that you have to kind of wrap your brain around that one. It's not obvious at all. Yes. So like in the book, it said like the equation only works for like hydrogen. Technically, like Z is always going to be one. Yes, that's right. Uh, this is only good for hydrogen. You're exactly right about this. So the only Z you're ever going to use when you use this is one. That negative sign, by the way, out there is not representing the charge of the electron. We know the electron is negatively charged. It's there to make sure that the sign is right for when the electron jumps up higher and when it falls back down lower. Uh, that will work out the sign. Where we, we, if we didn't have that negative sign out front there, it would be backwards. And we'll we'll see what that is because we'll calculate the energy for different jumps. We good with the slide. Okay, so this is just going to allow us, and the book went through a derivation for this, so let's just cut to the chase on this. And I, I don't think you need to write the entire thing, and this is just a baby derivation, but this is going to give us the wavelength of light given off by an electron jumping uh, from one energy level to another. That's what the delta E is, the change in the energy of the energy levels when the electron is falling. Um, the calculation of the wavelength. Do you remember seeing that in the reading? Yeah. Hopefully, if you read, yeah, that was there. And I think 
I don't think, I know that Zoom Dolls even derived this thing. It's so simple. They took this and they said, okay, well, if nu is equal to c over lambda, then we just plug that in. Uh, and then from here, you just rearrange the delta E and the lambda to get that equation in the box. Okay, we all good with that? This part uh, we're not going to do. Uh, it just goes through some of the background, what Bohr was thinking. Uh, I'm going to skip that part. And so this is an example of uh, a hydrogen atom with its various energy levels, a few of them. Supposedly hydrogen has more than, I think this has four energy levels. You can have seven or eight, uh, but that's quite far from the nucleus. And with only one proton in there, uh, that proton is going to have a tough time hanging onto an electron that's eight energy levels out. It's very far from it. So what this is saying is that as an excited electron, which is up higher than one, as it returns back down to the ground state, uh, it releases energy. And I have a, a squiggly kind of thing coming out uh, representing what? What does the squiggly mean? It's light. It's light waves. That's right. What we call a photon. Now, a photon is only given off if the electron is falling. You know why? Release energy. It has to release energy. In order to jump up, and we call it becoming excited, for the electron to become excited to jump up, it's got to take in energy. It's not stable like that because it's got more energy uh, in it. The tendency of nature is to get rid of some of its energy. So uh, the electron is going to return back down immediately in most cases uh, and release that energy. That energy comes out in the form of light waves. Now I have an example down here that we're going to do. And I know this is a little bit frustrating because the font that I use, this looks like a Z. It's not, it's a 2. <laughs> So up here it says that uh, the wavelength of that jump can be calculated, but that's not what I have down here. Before we can find the wavelength, we have to know what delta E is. How much energy uh, is it releasing as it falls from the second energy level to the first? So uh, that's delta E, and we always calculate delta by taking the final minus the initial. So the final is the energy at n equals 1 minus the initial, the energy at n equals 2. So that's why I have it arranged like this. The delta E is n equals 1 minus n equals 2. So the delta E looks like what? We're going to have to plug in 1 and 2 into that, that Bohr energy equation. The energy at uh, point 1 is negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18th joule times z squared, which is 1, over the n squared, which in this case is 1. Well, that's simple enough. 